Hi team, my name's Francis Mountjoy and I'm on a journey to try to understand how to design and build homes that are healthy, comfortable, energy efficient and durable. But to know where we're going, we have to know where we started. And that is why I'm here with Pro Climbers Educational Manager, John Davies. Hello John. G'day Francis, how are you doing? I'm good. So we're here at this old wooden villa. It's over a hundred years old, still standing. My question for you is, why don't we build houses like this anymore? It's a great question. I mean, this house, you're right, it's still standing, which is a whole lot more than we can say for newer builds that haven't stood the test of time. So let's go and learn a whole lot from this one. So Francis, this building was designed with durability in mind but the way that it achieves the durability can mean that it can be uncomfortable and really energy inefficient. Durability in construction is all about how we deal with moisture. That rain, we want to keep it outside. That's kind of easy, but it's the moisture that we generate inside, which can become a problem. So, you know, moisture from cooking and cleaning and showering and, and, and even just yeah, and breathing. So the genius of this type of building is that there are gaps and cracks and cavities all over the place, which allow for lots of air movement and therefore lots of drying. It's drafty on, on purpose? Drafty on purpose. But you know, there's another part of that, which is quite amazing. Even though it's drafty, they still need windows and doors to be opened for ventilation. They still need you to be actively getting fresh air into the build. Yeah, now it's cold. It's cold. Nothing better than a nice warm fire. Yeah, that's nice. You know, the hot air that is coming off that, that's all straight out of this building, out with the drafts through the gaps and the cracks. The key bit, though, is that we want to start warming up all of the bricks, all of the solid materials that are around this. That will help dry out the home and it'll make it a bit more comfortable here. Key, though, you have to keep that going. You know what that means? Oh, is that enough? Oh, it might be enough for what, through till Thursday? Thursday. Oh, now I'm too hot. You could just go to another room. Now I'm too cold again. So Francis, there's a lot of really cold surface temperatures in this room. We've just come from that nice warm room and here it's just unheated. So the house is durable, but it's too cold and it takes a lot of work. Well, it takes heaps of work. You need to keep that fire going all of the time right through winter. You need to keep that drying the house out, but you also need to ventilate using the windows just to keep fresh air in the building too. But that's not really how we live in buildings now, especially in our cities. So modern housing's come a long way? Maybe. Let's go take a look. So Francis, this house was built in the last five years and I don't know what you noticed, but I'm cold. What's missing? We need a heater. So the villa that we were in had its own heating system. It was built in, it was the fireplace. But like most modern builds, this one doesn't have any heating system built in. So we've had to bring our own heater. And now we're warming up this room and it'll take a little while to heat up, but I wonder what's happening in the other rooms. It's cold in here. So look, I've got an image of you on here and our surface temperatures behind you on the wall are 8.6 degrees. So these are different bedrooms in the house. It's like a roller coaster of temperature up and down, up and down across seven days of data. That roller coaster of temperature isn't just a stress on the people, it's a stress on the building. And it's showing up right here. Condensation. This building doesn't have a heating system built in and it doesn't have a water vapor control system like a ventilation system built in beyond being able to open the windows. So. If that moisture is accumulating here, it's also possibly accumulating in the wall because we've got insulation in there which has slowed down the drying process. And if we get condensation forming in the structure, we can end up with mould and rot and damage and decay in that wall. Okay, so this house is more comfortable than the villa, but not as durable. Not as durable. This isn't going to last 50 years with moisture like that let alone a hundred years. Wow. 
Okay, so if this is in the future, then what is? Let me show you. This is the future. This house has been designed with energy efficiency, with health, for comfort and durability, all built in. What do you notice? It's quiet. Feels dry. It's warm. Warm? How warm? Okay. 18. Oh, 20, it's about 20 degrees all over. You've got temperatures there, but this shows us what the temperatures are actually doing across the home. And you see how stable it is. So we had that real roller coaster in the other house of temperature all over the place. This is real stable between about 18.2 degrees and just over 20 degrees all of the time. Francis, the future of building goes way beyond just putting some more insulation in the wall. It needs to consider five pillars of good design that all come together to work together and support each other. Those five things are insulation, ventilation, air tightness, considering thermal bridges in the building envelope, and then having some good windows and doors. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. What, what, what the heck is air tightness? Well, I'm glad you asked, but I think we need to make that the topic of our next episode. Join us for the next episode. What the heck is air tightness? <laughs>